A welcome back from that report. The Nigerian Central Security Clearing System has revealed that businesses operating in the country encounter an alarming average of 2,560 cyber attacks each week, highlighting the significant cybersecurity challenges companies face in an increasingly digital landscape. It also noted that cybercrime is projected to cost the global economy over $10.5 trillion in 2024. Now, I have the Acting Chief Information Security Officer, CSCS, PLC, Olaya Miagbele, joining me now for more on this conversation. Thanks for joining me, Yemi. Good morning, Justin. Thank you for the invitation. Yes, My pleasure to be here. Our pleasure. Let's talk about cyber security and cyber threats as they affect uh, you know, businesses in the country. But specifically, let's start with the um, current trends that um, you have observed in the cyber threat uh, landscape affecting critical infrastructures in the country. Okay, so Justin, um, thank you once again. So the truth is Nigeria is not an exception to um, cyber attack when it, cyber, the trend in cyber attack when it comes to um, what is happening globally. Uh, the same set of um, cyber attacks that we see globally is what we also see in Nigeria. So on top of that list for me would be um, what we call phishing attack. Uh, a phishing attack is the type of attack where the actors uh, send you um, emails containing suspicious link or attachments uh, just to compromise your system or your environment. Um, depending on what the malware that is attached to the email is um, designed to do, sometimes it's to get uh, sensitive information within your environment. Um, another um, attack on that list would be what we call um, ransomware attack. Ransomware attack is similar to the uh, kidnapping that you see from this physical side of security, where uh, a human being is kidnapped. But in the case of cyber attack, which is ransomware, it's your sensitive information, your data, your files that are encrypted um, just in a way to make sure that you don't have access to those things. Uh, you can imagine how devastating it would be for an organization not to have access to their um, critical uh, data and information and, and documents. So what the attackers then do is to um, request for a ransom for you to have access to your um, your documents and your sensitive information. Again. Another um, one on that list would be what we call insider threats. Insider threats, in, in this case, the actors are colluding with um, internal um, staff that they've had relationship with just to make sure they're able to wreak havoc on your organization. Um, another one, just because of time, is um, DDoS. Um, that we call that distributed denial of service attack. DDoS attack just um, aims to make sure they overwhelm your system and they bring down, bring down um, your infrastructure. Uh, take, for example, if you have a successful DDoS attack on the banking sector in Nigeria, you can imagine what the impact would be if users, um, customers are not able to have access to their to their to their phones. If cost, um, partners cannot do transaction even with their international uh, partners, that would have a lasting uh, impact. The same thing goes to other critical infrastructure within that um, economy, the um, telecommunication sector. It will have uh, an overarching effect if if there is a successful attack on any of those critical infrastructure. It's good to just have like a perspective so our viewers can understand, uh, you know, all of these um, issues. But specifically right now, let's go to some subsectors, maybe, for instance, uh, the banking system and their platform. But how significant is the increase in cyber attacks on uh, sectors such as um, banking and capital market? And what are the key vulnerabilities? Okay, thank you. So if you look at the banking sectors um, specifically, uh, generally, um, globally, the volume of attack that we've seen post uh, pandemic has more than doubled. But again, the, the banking sector, the financial sector is a prime target. And there's the reasons why that sector uh, has become prime target of these attackers. One of those reasons is because of monetary gain. So the reason why some of these actors uh, do what they do is because they want financial gain from these activities. Another thing is because of the digital transformation that is happening in the financial sector. So um, we come with digital transformation is also a, an increased threat landscape. And these actors understand that fact and they try to leverage on, on that, um, that fact. 
Um, another thing is because of the sensitive nature of the data that exists within the financial sector. Don't forget the reason why this, um, one of the reasons why this sector is called the critical, is termed the critical infrastructure is because of the sensitive nature of data that it, they, they are in cost to you. So um, there has been significant increase in, in, in the attack that we see when it comes to the financial industry. And if you look at the data, um, the data from Satista in 2023, it shows an average of over $5 billion um, dollars, um, where, for a successful bridge on any financial institution. Mm. If you look at that data, you compare with what we have in 2024, that has increased to over $6 billion. That's an increase of $1 billion for any successful bridge of any financial institution. Um, if just look at the financial loss that result that results from that um, successful breach. Now, in terms of the key vulnerabilities that exist in that space mm. that these guys leverage on, one of the key things that you, you that you have to consider is third party risk. You know, a lot of uh, transformation are happening when it comes to the banking sector, the financial sector in general. They are mm. adopting new technology, uh, there are uh, they are integrations with third party, there are integration with vendors and third party and new so with this integration, with this um, adoption of new software, also comes with um, vulnerability, new set of vulnerabilities. So having a way to be able to deal with those kind of risk is something um, that the actors tend to leverage on if you're not able to address it properly. Another thing is also legacy systems. If you look at the financial um, sector, most of the services or part of the services that they run today uh, are services that they've been running um, say, for example, 10, 20 years ago, systems that are in use then, most of those systems have become legacy systems. So, uh, and it's sometimes um, very difficult to transition, to change those systems. And these um, actors also understand the fact that those legacy systems exist in this environment, mm. and they tend to um, exploit those vulnerabilities. Uh, operational resilience is another key factor. Um, that affect the, those type um, the financial sector. Right. So if you look at things that you need to have in place, you need to have uh, be able to detect and respond to attack. But if you don't have those kind of systems in play, it, it becomes a very difficult situation for for an organization. And this actors can leverage right. on that deficiency when it comes to operational resilience. Okay, let's move on now. Um, you know, let's some of these issues that you have mentioned. You know, um, like uh, data breaches and website defacement. Um, how do they affect both public confidence and operational stability, really? Okay, so again, one of the key things that you also need to look at is um, these things affect um, the economic. Economic disruption is one of the first things that you look yeah. at if you're looking at um, yes. disruption that happens to critical infrastructure. Imagine what will happen if the banking sector is affected, the telco is affected, and organizations cannot do transactions, they cannot mm. make calls. They cannot use have access to data. That will affect a whole lot of um, conversation, a whole lot of transaction, even international transactions with local partners. Another thing that you also need to consider is um, data theft and exponent. Uh -huh. So if there is a data breach on any critical infrastructure in Nigeria today, the actors can ship sensitive information out of the country. Also, public trust is another thing that you also need to consider. Um, when there is successful attack on an entity, the customers, the stakeholders of that type of organization begin to have trust issues when it comes to how secure their sensitive assets are with those um, type of organization. Okay, I know uh, technology is ever advancing and digital transformation with security is an issue, but then still talking about um, the financial institutions, which is actually a key player in the economy, you know, just how can there be a, a sort of a balance per se? Because, uh, you know, most of the times uh, you hear banks saying that they are doing upgrades, they are doing this and that. Um, and at those particular times, uh, these, uh, you know, unscrupulous people may want to just use or take, uh, you know, the most of that particular time, you know, to, you know, carry out these attacks. So how do you um, strike a balance of, uh, you know, upgrading with um, technology, digital transformation with your security as well? Okay, so digital transformation is one thing that every organization that's, uh, that is forward-looking will have to embrace, um, regardless of the challenges that come. Oh. One of those challenges is security and privacy um, risk. 
as you migrate into new software, new territory, um, it also comes with um, uh, expanded um, trade landscape, comes with um, financial uh, security and privacy risks mm -hmm. because your data, my customer's data are actually being um, used on these new technologies. But as an organization, you have to have a robust risk management system that is able to manage um, those type of risk. We talked about complex um, legacy system before. You have to have um, a risk management framework in place to be able to address migrating your um, migrating your legacy system into um, into the new type of technology. Another thing you also look, try to look at is the cost con constraints. Uh, these new technologies uh, become at a cost and they are not cheap. Uh, also, one of the things that you also mentioned in your in your in the question is customers' trust and experience. Mm. I'm sure today, if you if a bank, if your bank should tell send you um, a bill that they are kind of doing upgrade, I'm sure you begin to ask questions. That is because of the experience that we've had uh, in the past two yes. couple of months with upgrade and all that. So mm. all these things are some of the things that comes with digital transformation. But again, as I said earlier, mm. with all the challenges, organizations just need to um, have the re the framework in place, mm -hmm. a very good framework in place, to be able to manage those risks. Right. But tra digital transformation is not something that an organization mm -hmm. can run away from. Oh, well said. Uh, let's talk about the place of um, education now. You know, so how can maybe awareness and training initiatives uh, be improved to empower both the employees and, of course, the public to better understand these issues concerning cyber attacks, cyber security, and cyber risks? Okay, so one of the first things you want to do in improving your security awareness and um, training is you want to build a security-conscious environments within your organization and within the ecosystem at large. So if you look at the uh, conference that we just had, one of the things that we did was to uh, not just partner with the capital markets, we also partner with the Office of the National Security Advisor, right. we partner with the banking sector, even the OEMs. So what you want to do is to create um, a, an ecosystem, a financial ecosystem where everybody is aware of what is happening. Another thing that you need to do is also to customize your training and awareness. Uh, customize it to address the kind of audience that you're speaking to. Mm -hmm. Another thing you also want to do as an organization is when you're doing your onboarding process, you want to integrate um, security awareness into your onboarding process. So any new organ any new staff that is coming to your organization mm -hmm. is, um, is introduced into that culture of security consciousness. And lastly, your feedback mechanism has to be very, very good. Uh, don't just do security awareness. Uh, give um, space for feedback. Let them tell you what you're doing right. Let them tell you um, part of what you're doing wrong and what you can improve on. Those are just part of um, some right. of the ways you can improve your security awareness. Okay, fine. Let's talk, since you mentioned the capital market in passing, let's talk about that now. Okay, what measures has um, the CSCS uh, taken to safeguard um, against threats to information infrastructure in the nation's capital market? Okay, so if you check our history, one of the things that we continuously do is to invest in security solutions. Uh, AI-driven security solutions is um, part of what we've done. Another thing that we also, and that we will continue to do, and what um, part of what we we'll also try to do is to form strategic alliance with partners, with strategic partners, um, with um, um, public or um, public um, office holders to make sure we build a more resilient financial ecosystem. Our aim as CSCS is to position ourselves as top leader in cybersecurity within the capital market, um, within the capital market, and we'll continue to do that. We want to make sure uh, the investors are confident that their assets and their securities are secured within the capital market. Okay, as we uh, round off, uh, you, ought, you just mentioned AI. Uh, let's talk about that for just uh, one minute now. How AI-driven systems and automated response mechanism can be leveraged, especially given the increase in volume of threats that human um, teams alone cannot manage. So let's see how, how can AI, or AI rather, help us in all of this as we round off. Okay, so over the couple of years, um, AI infusion into cybersecurity 
especially the security tools, has been of tremendous um, effect to, to us on the positive side. And also don't forget, the same way we can leave, we're leveraging on AI for the positive side is the same way these actors can also leverage, mm. are also leveraging AI on the sense. other side. So, yeah. well, from this um, good side of it, it will be it, it's been able to help us to achieve um, some some things. Um, one of such is the enhanced threat detection. You're able to rapidly, um, quickly detect when something is happening on your network today. Mm. Automated response is another thing that we've been able to achieve. Unlike before, where you have to manually do some things, uh, now with the AI, um, AI integrated cybersecurity tools, you're able to remotely do some things uh, at the press of a, just a click of a button. Another thing is improved accuracy. Before we used to see a lot of false positive, where you have say several of incident happening, and then you need to go manually to investigate each one to detect which one is actually the real one. Hmm. Now, the AI system has been able to help us to reduce that noise. All right. Um, and lastly, um, predictive capability is also something that we've seen hmm. when it comes to AI. We're hmm. able to predict based on your your past um, activities. We're able to predict what is normal, what is not normal when it comes to All the right. activities of employee on the network. All right. We well, must say a very big um, thank you to you, uh, EME, for your time. Or oh, Laiemi Agbile is Acting Chief uh, Information Security Officer at the Central Security and Clearance Systems PLC, CSCS. Many thanks for being a part of the show, EME. We do appreciate your time. Thank you, Justin, and thank you for the opportunity to be here. All right. You know, enough cannot be said about um, cybersecurity. So you have heard from the expert today. So just do, uh, you know, the most you can to just um, ensure that um, you and your business are actually secured, you know, in the cyberspace. But that's the size of the show for today. I am Justin Akadonye. Many thanks for being there.